Hello and welcome to another nation guide. Today we are going to take a look at Aztec. Aztec has been requested a lot of times by a number of subscribers here on YouTube. However, today's video is at the request of my god tier patron, Cody. Cody, hope this tutorial helps you in your Aztec run and thank you for your continued support. Alright, let's get into it. Aztec starts in the middle of Mesoamerica as a five province nation and just so it happens, four of those provinces are gold mines. So obviously money is never going to be an issue. Aztecs also start with the religion of Nauhadl. Nauhadl is one of the religions that game considers as primitive, which means you cannot embrace institutions or build boats as long as you are Nauhadl, as long as you haven't reformed Nauhadl religion, which is a big drawback early game. However, it is a fairly strong religion. We can get 5 reforms from it, which are permanent modifiers as long as we are no huddle. There are modifiers for discipline, war exhaustion reduction, stab cost reduction, diplo relation slot, and an extra colonist. They are really useful perks that are good for any style of gameplay you want to play. Now huddle mechanics though are quite different from the usual old world religion mechanics, so let's go over them quickly as that will decide our moves as Aztecs for the first few decades. Now Hadl has 5 reforms and to pass a reform we need to have 5 subjects and plus 1 stab and once we pass a reform we lose 1 stab and 3 out of the 5 subjects are released as well. I'm pretty sure it's random on which subjects will be released but let me know in comments if you found some logic behind it. So how the gameplay goes is basically get 5 subjects, pass a reform which means we lose 3 subjects, then go to war, get 3 more subjects, pass another reform and rinse and repeat. Basically, we need to go to war again and again to pass all reforms. Now, Huddle also has the Doom mechanic. Doom takes up automatically based on how many provinces we own. At the start of game, we own 5 provinces, so Doom takes up plus 5 every year. Each point of Doom will increase the tech and idea cost by 0.5% and decrease aggressive expansion by minus 1. So the idea is that we need to keep this Doom countdown because if it reaches 100, our ruler and heir will die or will be sacrificed and we get a 000 king instead. We lose all monarch points and lose all our subjects. So it's pretty darn terrible all around. But countering Doom is actually very easy playing as Aztecs. We get a minus 20% reduction to Doom ticks with every religion reform we pass and that's additive, which means passing all 5 reforms gives minus 100% reduction in Doom ticks. So we don't need to manage Doom once we have passed all 5 reforms. In case you find yourself unable to reform quickly enough, you can also decrease Doom by engaging enemy armies, occupying their provinces and by a subject interaction which lets you sacrifice your subjects, ruler and heir. It will obviously mean more liberty desire for them, but if you are playing Aztecs right, you will never need to use this interaction. So now it must be pretty clear that we need to play aggressively at the start. This way we can keep the doom ticks down and also pass religion reforms quickly so we get some neat modifiers and we don't have to worry about doom ever. Finally, there's another mechanic which is the reform religion button after we have passed all 5 reforms. For this, we need to have our core province next to a core province of another nation who has embraced any institution, which will be one of the European colonizers. And once we reform religion, we can get institutions, we can get cheaper tech and we can finally make boats. So reforming religion is the key to long term gameplay obviously. However, it's very dependent on where and when the Europeans show up and we need to be prepared to reform religion as soon as that happens. Keeping all that in mind, you need to have a blazing fast start. You should be at war all the time for the first 50 years or so. You have the economy to sustain it thanks to all the gold provinces in the area and luckily you start with a 344 general which is better than any other general in neighboring countries. As a Nauhadl, you also get the Flower War CB, so you don't need to wait for claims and you can just attack any one of the neighboring nations and vassalize them for cheaper war score. And that brings me to another point. Until you have passed 5 religion reforms, don't take any province for yourself. Your aim should be to just vassalize everyone. Remember, you need 5 vassals to complete one reform. 
The liberty desire of subjects is irrelevant as well because they cannot declare independence until truce expires and by the time truce expires you will have passed a reform which means there is a good chance that they won't be your vassal anymore. And you will also be at war all the time and vassals cannot declare independence when the overlord is at war. Yes, they won't join your wars but like I mentioned earlier with the godlike general and a gold fuel economy you won't have problems fighting your puny neighbors. At the start of the game, we will rival whoever has rivaled us. Then build army to force limit, get one ally who is not a neighbor, and once we have the 10th stack, we will attack whoever has the weakest alliance. In my game it was Tlaxcala who had only one minor ally. The first war is a bit tricky, but as long as you engage one army at a time, you will be okay. If the enemy army starts to seize down your capital fort, you can easily engage them and get the defensive bonus as all provinces in this region are either hills, mountains or highlands. I managed to siege down one of the enemies in 3 years and remember to always vassalize them until you have 5 religious reforms. So I vassalized them and took all their money. Which is also something you should do. Always take all their money. We will need it to hire mercs soon. After that, I started to siege down Tlaxcala's level 3 fort. We also start with a level 3 capital fort, but Tlaxcala or most of your enemies won't have enough army force limit to siege down level 3 forts. Soon I finished the war and vassalized them as well and took their money. So in 1449, I already have two vassals. You might be wondering here if it's okay to demand vassalization from someone that isn't co-belligerent in war, as that would mean more aggressive expansion. Well, that's something else you don't need to worry about at all, because yes, there will be a... and a lot of it, but you will either have a truce or will be fighting your neighbors, and in this region as a whole, everyone is fighting everyone all the time, because AI also needs to counter the doom mechanic. So don't worry about A, don't worry about subjects liberty desire and just be at war at all times. Next I declared on another neighbor, this one had two allies, which might sound like a bad thing because now you need to fight three armies, but it's actually great because you can get three more vassals in just one war. And we can get five vassals in total at the end of this war and pass a reform. The strategy is the same, isolate the armies and kill them one by one before they join others. During this war, I noticed that my primary target was fighting another defensive war against two other nations. So, I decided to piece out the primary war allies with Humiliate and Money. Because power projection is great, and we also get the age objective fulfilled. Then I vassalized the primary enemy and I was called into the defensive war. So now we are fighting two nations which we can vassalize as well for less AE. I know I said AE isn't an issue, but hey, if you have the option, take less AE, right? So I vassalized them both and by 1455 I had 5 vassals. I also had plus 1 staff from an event and so first reform was passed. Best one to take early is the discipline bonus as we will be at war a lot and the extra discipline means faster wars. This will decrease the staff by 1 and we lose 3 of the vassals. Now we need to look at the truces. Luckily now we have a truce map mode in game which shows us who we can attack immediately. So again. Pick a target and declare war. In my game, I noticed that one of the nations nearby, Odmi, had three small vassals, which again means I could get three vassals in one war. So I attacked them immediately and wrapped up the war in two years, taking three vassals from them. And in 1460, I had passed the second reform. I took the war exhaustion reform this time, as we are fighting all the time and war exhaustion reduction is going to be very useful. So we lose a stab and three vassals again. And time to rinse and repeat. Look at the truce map mode and find the easiest enemy to declare on. I again declared on Tlaxcala as my truce had expired. They didn't have any allies so it was a quick war and I vassalized them. After that I attacked Flapanak to the south and vassalized them too. And then it was Totonac in the east. And you can see there is a potential for coalition here but it will never fire or even form as long as we keep attacking everyone around us. So again in 1463, I had to stab up once and then passed another reform, this time taking the stab cost modifier. By the way, during this war, I also disinherited my heir. He had one admin skill and you want a bit more admin there. Also, we get double prestige from the flower war CB, so we will get the prestige back soon anyways. Looking at the truce map next, I could attack another neighbor, who I vassalized soon after. Then I noticed Yokotan has become quite big, but they were still under 100% war score. Although they had 3 allies, I decided to attack them anyways. I took money from the allies and vassalized one of them, then vassalized the primary war enemy and in 1467 we have 5 vassals once more. So time for the 4th reform. 
This time I took the diplot relation slot and then rinse and repeat time again. I found a neighbor with no allies and no truce so they became a vassal soon. After that I was actually truce logged with everyone around me. Luckily one of my vassals had a claim on their neighbor so I attacked them using the regular conquest CB and I got two vassals from that war. Thus completing the final reform in 1471. As you can tell I was constantly at war. I still have a good bank of money though and some manpower because half of my armies works at this point. Now we are left with two vassals and no fear of doom ticking up. During this last war I also got an heir of 002 stats which is just the worst. I decided to disinherit him as well and finally I got another heir with 323 stats which isn't great but he will have to do for now. Managing monarch points playing as natives is quite different when compared to playing other nations in game. So let's quickly talk about what to do with your monarch points in phase 1. For admin, use them to take tech. We need to get to tech 5 for the first idea group. Also make sure you have 100 points or so always so you can stab up and pass a reform when needed. You might also need to buy down inflation from time to time. For Diplo, you can use it to buy down War Exhaustion, although you won't need it very often. Rest of the Diplo points should be used for developing the gold mines. For Military points, use them to take tech as well, we need to get to tech 5 here too, and since we start with a 435 ruler, we will get military tech before others, making wars even easier. Also look for generals with siege pips when possible. You can even hire advisors to get monarch points if you want, you will have the economy to support it. For admin, try to get the inflation reduction advisor when possible because you will start to get some inflation soon. So we have passed all reforms in less than 30 years now, which I think is a good target. Pass all reforms in 30 years so you can start the next phase of your game. In phase 2, we will do two things. One, we will sacrifice, I mean assimilate, all our neighbors in Mesoamerica. And two, we will get to the exploration idea group. So obviously the next big target is to reform the religion. But we need to wait for Europeans to show up. You can't just wait and not take the exploration ideas. But you will have two main drawbacks. One, you can't explore terra incognita. And information about who is where is important always. And two, you will only have one colonist and your colonies will grow very slowly. So if you are super lucky, some Europeans will land right next to you and you will get to reform the religion soon. If not, you will just be hanging there till 1600s even waiting for someone to show up. My recommendation is to beeline for admin tech 5, then take exploration ideas and complete them. While that is happening, you can start eating up the neighbors, this time full annexing them for yourself. Also, when the first exploration idea gives you a conquistador, use that to start exploring all coastal provinces. That will tell you where the Europeans have landed and also it will give you something to do. Because just waiting for Europeans to show up is very boring. At least for me. I just speed 5 through the 50 years in game here. Keep fighting everyone around you. You can annex, I mean assimilate everyone in Mesoamerica by about 1510 or 1520. Then just put your army to drilling and explore using the conquistador. In my game I saw the first colonizer in England first time in 1508. And there are a couple of related bad events here. One is the spread of smallpox which gives a lot of negative modifiers on provinces. The other is the rapid collapse of society which gives flat minus 20% morale, minus 10% discipline, and plus 33% all power cost. Which is absolutely terrible and probably one of the worst triggered events in game. But there's nothing you can do about it except reform religion as soon as possible. For colonization, start colonizing north as that's the most likely place you will find a European colony. Rest is just waiting for the colonies to finish because just having a colony is not enough, you need to have an adjacent core. And once that's done, you can reform the religion. This will give you 80% of tech of the country you are reforming from and all the institutions they have embraced. In my game I was able to do this in 1569. The timing varies but it should be somewhere between 1545 and 1565. There's not much you can do about the timing though. Now once you reform, you get all the institutions they have and so your monarch point cap is reduced. For example, here in my game, the monarch point cap was at 2687 before reforming. And so when I reformed, the cap went to 1188 because Portugal hasn't embraced printing press yet. Now if you take tech or idea right now, say it costs 400 monarch points. 
that should bring down the monarch points to 2200 something, but instead the game just brings it down to the new monarch point cap of 1188, which means you will lose about 1100 monarch points for each category, which is obviously terrible because monarch points are the most valuable resource in game and we should not waste them ever. So instead, you should spend all your extra monarch points first on developing provinces, especially gold mines, and then take the techs and ideas whichever you want to. I prefer taking expansion and defensive ideas next. You will still be behind on tech though compared to the European nations, so get all your level 3 advisors as you can easily afford them, then start building heavy ships. The sailors count recover slowly so you will have to wait, but just keep building heavy ships on the Atlantic side. I'd say about 20 of them. This will dissuade the colonizers and they likely won't attack you in the meantime. Also build cannons for your army and a lot of forts. Forts are good for defense in case the enemy lands there and they also give you army tradition. In phase 2 you will spend admin till you get tech 5 for the first idea group, then just save the admin points for coring provinces when you expand. For Diplo, get all the exploration ideas, they will help you a lot. Any left after that obviously goes to developing the provinces. For military points, you don't need to take military tech beyond tech 5 really. Instead, spend it on generals and conquistadors and the rest goes to developing provinces as well. Phase 3 is basically rapid expansion in the new world. You will be the first new world nation to reform, thus you will have massive military advantage over everyone. And with exploration ideas completed, you can get claims on overseas provinces, which is all of South America when playing as Aztecs. Additionally, you can also directly attack the European colonial nations. And for players who don't know this, if you have a capital in the new world and you attack the colony, the overlord does not join in the war unless they enforce peace, but AI rarely does that, and you can just start taking over everyone in the new world. And once you have caught up on tech, you can make your way to Africa and eventually Europe or Asia depending on what you are going for. This might happen, yes. The colonizers might attack you once or twice before you reform religion and get stronger. Don't sweat. As soon as they attack, just sue for peace and offer them whatever they want. Early in game, they will just want your money in war reps. They won't take any provinces until 1600s or so, by which time you should be ready to take them on. Don't attempt to fight them at all because it's obviously no contest and you will lose horribly. Just give them money and peace them out as soon as possible. Also don't bother improving relations with them early in game. All major colonizers, Castile, Portugal, France, England, want your provinces and will have minus 1000 opinion modifier. Some minor colonizers such as Holland might ally you, but they won't be of much help either early in game. Later though, you should try to find a minor colonizer to ally who might knowledge share with you after reforming. There are also a lot of events related to Aztecs, and I won't go over all of them because I think it's fun to find that out for yourself. We already talked about a couple of bad events when colonizers arrive. There are also events that give you free stab or some bad omen events. Also a lot of events to decrease doom, which helps a lot. There are also some events that will give you permanent modifiers all through the game. Always take the options that gives you good permanent modifiers, no matter what the cost. And that is the gist of it, Aztec's gameplay is different from other nations and so I can see why a guide was requested multiple times. They are a fun nation to play though. In future, I have plans to do a let's play for Sunset Invasion achievement, which should be really fun, I am looking forward to that. I hope this guide helps players who are looking for an Aztec strategy. You were watching a Radiator's Guide, thank you for your time and I'll see you all in the next one.